answer never wavers on this. 24 hours means 24 hours, no exceptions. You're better off to wait an extra day than have the possibility that the head can come loose. Uh, then you're going to have more work to do in preparing all the surfaces again, re-epoxy the parts back together, and then, and then you still got to wait 24 hours before you can hit the club again. This leads us to the next category, which is quick setting, fast setting, or sometimes referred to as tour setting epoxies. Now let me say this now. I try not to give the image that club making is like fast food. That is, you can put to, uh, clubs together and hit them instantly. I think this cheapens club making. Fast setting epoxies came about because of the request of technicians in the vans that, that follow the players on tour. If the club breaks or needs a quick adjustment before a round, they don't have time to wait 24 hours. They need it now. Yes, there are good fast setting epoxies available, but there's a better chance that the club can come apart as compared to using the 24-hour epoxies. The reason being is the quicker the setting time, the more brittle the epoxy tends to be until the full cure takes place. Quick setting epoxies are available in 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, 2 hours. You name it, it could be made. Make sure to read the shear strength uh, on the epoxy. It may read something like 2,900 PSI, or PSI is short for pounds per square inch, or 3,300 or 4,500. The higher the number, the stronger it is. Equally important is to remember that it will be harder to take apart the higher the number. Next up, let's discuss some terms that you, be, you should be aware of. One is working time, or also referred to as the pot life. Once you mix the epoxy, you only have so long for the epoxy to remain pliable before you're unable to apply it evenly on the surfaces. This is important because you want to have everything prepared so you can epoxy everything at once. If you're attempting to epoxy eight irons with fast setting epoxy with a potman of one life, good luck. I hope you're quicker than me you may need to epoxy the set in stages. This is why a 24-hour epoxy is best, because you have more time and less likely to rush and make a mistake. The guys in the tour vans make a living catering to the tour players and can probably put everything together in their sleep. Plus, a lot of what they're making is one or two clubs at a time, not, necessar not necessarily full sets. Our next term is the setting time, or also referred to as gel time. This is the time when the epoxy becomes rigid, but not fully cured. At this time, you can handle the clubs without fear that the head will turn on the shaft. But I still wouldn't do any activities like swing weighting down the shaft on a steel shaft that might jar the, the club loose from the shaft. Wait until the next phase, which is when the epoxy is fully cured. Curing time is often the name of the epoxy, but it's really the time required for the epoxy to achieve its maximum strength and rigidity. It should be noted that some um, quick setting epoxies can be played after the epoxy is set, but before it's cured. For example, you might have a quick set epoxy with a one minute, with one minute working time, so you better be ready. After five minutes, the epoxy is set. In 30 minutes, the epoxy may be hard enough to hit a ball. Over the next 23 hours and 30 minutes, it will continue to fully cure. I hope that last part makes sense. The directions for many epoxies will provide information that the epoxy fully cures in 24 hours, but specifically at a certain temperature, like 77 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's cooler than 77 degrees, then it will take proportionally longer for full, uh, full cure to take place. If you're building clubs in the winter uh, where your wor workshop gets cold or it's naturally cool like a basement, additional drying time is something to be considered. It's also possible to accelerate the curing time at higher temperatures. Some club makers have created heat boxes for this very purpose, or at least put a space heater to keep the clubs warm um, where the entire workshop will remain cool.
How do you mix epoxy? Well, there's usually two ways. The directions on the epoxy container will either tell you to measure by volume or by weight. For example, if it is a one-to-one -one ratio by volume, you just use equal amounts, and this can be eyeballed, as I will explain later. Or it may be a 10 to 7 ratio by weight. That is, you will use 10 grams of part A with 7 grams of part B, or 4.3 grams of part A with 3 grams of part B, if you're doing enough for a set of irons, or perhaps 0 0.7 grams of part A with 0 0.5 grams of part B for a couple clubs. The ratio remains the same. Normally, these are non-critical mixtures. That is, if you're a little off using one versus another, the epoxy will still cure, but it may affect, affect the uh, curing time uh, plus its uh, strength. But too much of the hardener will make it slightly more brittle. Just make sure you're not too far off, otherwise you can adversely affect the strength and the time to require the uh, full cure. So here's how I, I prepare a batch of epoxy. I don't mix by weight, but uh, rather volume, because I find it much easier. But if, if you do weigh it, uh, you can either use uh, those uh, small plastic mixing cups or simply masking tape. The tape's cheaper, peels off, and is disposable. But let's say we need a batch, which is the quantity required to epoxy all the heads or even a single head in one operation. Uh, it's natural at first. You'll probably mix too much. But over time, you'll figure out how much you need so you have enough, yet you don't have too much waste. Um, we'll use our example before where we needed 4.3 grams of part A and 3 grams of part B. Um, we'll place a strip of tape or even overlap two pieces of tape so the epoxy doesn't overflow and create a mess. So you, you uh, put the tape on the scale and weigh it. Let's say it weighs 1 gram. Then you can set your scale to 5.3 grams or simply pour enough of the epoxy onto the tape until you get 5.3 grams. Set that aside. Remember, you could just peel it off and put it on your workbench like we have pictured here. Next, take some fresh tape and put it on the scale and note its weight. It might be 1.5 grams for the sake of argument. At this point, you need to add enough of the Part B until you get 4.5 grams on the scale, or basically all you're doing is getting 3 grams of material. The problem is if you try to do it all on one piece of tape or in a plastic cup, then you've got a problem if you add too much of Part B. Then you'll have to factor in the right ratio, which can be complicated if you don't excel at math. The other option is you're going to have to start all over again. Well, we pull that piece of tape with the Part B and place it so that it's overlapped the tape with the Part A on it. Now it's ready to mix. That's the, uh, in, in the slides, that's the upper right-hand picture. Okay, I wanted to show you that, uh, that method first.